Hello, I'd like to talk to you about a subject which is challenging lots of people around the world. Millions and millions of people are suffering from depression and then also panic attacks or anxiety attacks as they're often referred to. My name is Chris Cowley and you're not going to see glitz and glamour here and big stories. I'm just going to tell you what happened to me and what I did to change that and how I actually became a victor over depression. Really, I'll take you back. I was born in 1961, which is about 48 years ago. And uh, I really grew up, childhood was much like most uh, fortunate children, probably, because I lived near the sea. My parents weren't wealthy, but we never had any lack. We had enough to eat, decent homes, decent cars to drive, went to good schools. And um, I played a lot of rugby, cricket, bit of swimming, things like that, and went to university, studied to become an architect in 1980. I graduated, my first degree uh, I received in 1982, and again graduated in 1985. But really my problems began, began in 1985, during my main exams. I started basically with some pains in my neck and shoulders and lower back, and you know, at that time, I wasn't eating properly because I was studying too hard. I'm sure you know all of those things, the hamburgers, the hot dogs, the things we normally do that we shouldn't be doing. And uh, eventually I went to the doctor. It was during my main uh, and final exams. Went to the doctor and, of course, the normal uh, situation, which I think we're all familiar with, uh, take a little pill, you'll feel better soon. And... Uh, often not knowing what ingredients are inside of these little pills we get given and over the next two three years really what happened I visited 22 different specialists I had heart tests done, lumbar punches uh, you know you name it I had a glucose tolerance test that lasted five and a half hours where you get injected every half an hour they draw blood every half an hour things like that and uh, my health really wasn't much fun I don't know if you're in that situation or if you know anybody who's having difficulties like that. But what really happened is the problem got worse. The problem got worse and the medication I was taking was no solution. You know, I'll give you an idea. I'd sit in the winter time and I then stayed in a city called Peter Maritzburg near Durban in South Africa. And I would sit outside even one, two, three o'clock in the morning, I'd have burning sensations all over my body. Be in the middle of winter, I'd take my top out, just have uh, trainers or jogging shorts on, and it might have been, I don't know, sometimes minus 12, minus 16 degrees uh, in Queenstown where I stayed as well, and I'd still be feeling heat on my body, and I'd chuck water over myself, and, uh, you know, it was just no fun. Life wasn't worth living anymore, and... Uh, Really, I, I eventually ended up writing a book on the subject because everybody was asking me, you know, what happened, how did it work out eventually because I'm not having any problems anymore today and it's all been sorted out, obviously, with uh, a lot of prayer as well and um, the prayers of, of lots of my family and friends. And I think what eventually happened, the drugs were actually just making the situation worse. I ended up with 14 different diagnoses from 21 or 22 different specialists. Uh, I had a psychiatrist who ended up crying in my presence when I was the one needing the help because they just didn't know what was happening. I just want to read you some of the drugs. Yeah, oh, you know, in the books, it's just amazing uh, how many people suffer from depression. They reckon in the United Kingdom, about 7.35 million people have depression at any one particular point during the year. Obviously, when, when it gets colder and it's dry, uh, or when it gets colder and it's wet outside, and it's raining all the time, and the sun goes down at quarter past uh, three in the afternoon, uh, and it probably only gets up at nine, and if you're lucky, uh, the sun is above the clouds, and you might just see a few rays coming through the clouds. But they reckon in America, in the USA, anything up to 60, 70 million people at any particular time during the year suffering from depression. Now, we're not talking about something where you are just not feeling well. 
you know, you get that thing, oh, I'm just tired, um, I'm feeling a bit down, I'm feeling low. That's not what depression is. Depression is when it keeps on at last three months, six months, nine months, one year, two years, four years. I actually uh, suffered for 14 years. So if you think uh, it gets rough, then uh, you probably still have a lot of things to learn and a lot of bad things going to be on your way till it gets better. You know, what I was taking um, really were things given to me by people who weren't understanding what was happening and they were just trained that way. You know, doctors get taught to read from a book, uh, knowledge obviously, which has been gained probably over centuries, but uh, it's not a, all, a one solution fits all. No magic bullet in this situation, yet uh, that's what people want us to believe. You know, there are obviously lots of things that influenced me, uh, bad things because of the military that was happening in my life, people that were spying on my uh, officers, people that were burling me, and, you know, lots of things happen which is really not good. But I just want to read you some of the things I was taking. And you may relate to some of these uh, drugs. Lexitan, Indrel, Tenormin, Valium, Diazepam, Prozac, Fluorexetine, Ativan, Zocor, Voltaren. These are just some of the things that uh, get mentioned here. And what happened? It got so bad that I'd play with my daughter in the swimming pool and when I push her out of the water, I can see her screaming but I can't hear her. Yet I can hear people getting on and off buses about 800 meters from where I stayed. I can hear people talking but I can't physically see them. Okay? It gets that bad. So, uh, you know, if you're suffering, uh, cheer up. I know exactly what you're going through. Please don't expect people around you to understand because they don't know what's happening to you. They don't understand and I don't want to knock GPs and the medical profession but they don't understand either. It's like uh, if you want to learn how to take, play tennis would you rather have a good coach or somebody like Pat Cash, John McEnroe or uh, What's his name? <laughs> the new tennis player. The Swedish guy is teaching you how to play tennis properly. Um, you know, Mats Villander, people like that that know something about tennis. Andre Agassi or any kind of sport, you would actually rather learn from a person like that because they've experienced it and they've learned how to win. They win at their sport and they learn how to get over something bad and this is exactly the same sense you're not going to find the information i'm going to give you in both a book and just if you communicate with me uh, via the internet or you listen to some of my dvds or send me emails and things you're not going to find this in medicine they're not going to tell you these kind of things and the people around you often won't understand because often the people around you are frustrated they think you're just being lazy they just think that uh, you can just get up in the morning and decide to get over it. And it's not that simple. You know, it's not that simple. Uh, I want to give you one nice quote here in the book from a guy called Escher. He says, I don't, use, I don't need to use drugs because my dreams are frightening enough. And you might probably experience this as well. But what did I do eventually? Eventually I had to decide this is enough. Enough is enough. I gave up on the drugs, which really were just killing me. They, they, they're synthetic things, they aren't the things that God designed for you to put in your body. And I gave up on the drugs against all medical advice. And I suggest you consult your doctor rather than listening to me on that score, because you might actually die from that. So uh, I just gave up. I stopped the drugs. Uh, I started uh, to work through this for myself and uh, de develop some skills. And that's really what I want to share with you. I want to share it in the form of a book, which I've written. I've written all this stuff down while I was uh, depressed. And I changed a lot. The music I listen to, the food I eat, the people I associate with. And that's really what I want to share with you. Thanks a lot. And do check out on the website and send me some emails. Thanks. Bye.